Welcome, Shed Building 101. Well, not really. It's not a video about how to build a shed or what to do or the things uh, that are good and bad. It's what I did and uh, I saved some money and it's my adventure. Uh, it took about a month and a half or maybe a little bit more than that and how I built it and uh, enjoyed retirement life and puttering away at it bit by bit. Uh, there are some things that went right and some things that went drastically wrong. Uh, but in the end, uh, this is what it looks like. It's uh, never complete, but it's done. And we can put all our garden equipment in here and we can use it as a potting shed, a utility shed, uh, anything we want. So that's the introduction to our basically 1,000 Canadian dollars, eight by 12 complete shed. Stay tuned and we'll start from picking out the spot to build your shed, most important. Stay tuned. Here we are, step number one, picking your spot. We picked this spot, it's in the shade, we got some good views, great location. First thing, getting your posts set. Where are you gonna dig your post holes? I decided to build a pole barn style uh, because I had lots of lumber on site, lots of trees I could cut down, and expenses, it was cheap. So we did that. First thing is digging your post holes. Have a clamshell digger, and I have a spade trowel, and an iron bar, and your number one friend is water. So you dig what you can, you might go down a couple of inches or six inches, you fill it with water, tap it down with the iron rod, wait 10 minutes, and you can pick out the rocks with your hand very easily. But it still took 40, 45 minutes per hole to dig, and there's 11 of them here, okay? So water's your friend. Try and get it as square as you can. I tried, I marked it out, I thought it was, but as you'll find out later, that corner over there is way out of square by five inches or more. And all that is, is the width of the post. Okay, but it threw the whole ceiling off and the sheeting and everything. But uh, that's another story. So let's continue. We've got all the holes dug. It's as square as I think it can be. Next is, let's start cutting down some trees. Just missed the house. <laughs> that was fun. As you saw, cutting down the trees sometimes had some misfortune. Uh, I just barely missed the house on a few occasions and the other one on the far side, when it went down, it just about destroyed the fire pit. These are big trees. These are 40 footers or more. Okay, they're long and skinny, but they come down like a whip. So yeah, it was, uh, that was only three or four of them that I cut down. I cut down maybe a dozen or so. And uh, next step is uh, getting them uh, peeled. You just saw we cut down the trees. Here they are, three of them. How easy is it to peel a spruce tree? Peel the bark off, the sap running. Should come off pretty easy. Using a scraper, you can use a machete, anything. And a nice chipper. Here we go. We just start here. And you get lucky. And you get a whole big piece. Like that. Big pieces. So we'll do this, all three of them, and we'll come back when we're done. I need my notes for this part. Uh, we've got everything peeled. 
and we're ready to go, ready to put them in the ground. But we have to pressure treat them. And we're going to use a Japanese process called yakasugi or shosugi ban, which is charcoaling the bottom section that you're putting in the ground. That waterproofs it, that uh, makes it insect resistant, etc. And it lasts for decades and decades and decades, apparently. So we're going to try that. The next step is, let's put them in the ground. Well, we worked hard this morning and we got all the posts in. All the bottoms are charred and they're down at least two feet or so. It's on solid gravel rock, so it should be pretty good. The inside's pretty level. That's a 12 foot beam on the bottom there. And we've got a six inch overhang on each side, so that's good enough. So the inside's gonna be about almost eight by 11. So that's pretty good. So we're all in, the posts are all in. They're all up almost level. I have no idea how square it is, but we'll find out pretty soon. We're gonna use this one as center leveling post is everything. Everything's gonna come off of this one. There we go. Next is the trip to Home Depot to buy your lumber. So the sheeting, the shingles, the rafters, etc. And then I spent a whole day making rafters because I couldn't figure them out. So I ended up just slapping a board on the end and tracing it out and multiplying that. And that worked out really well. Uh, we have a ridge board here and we made a clamp so we can keep it straight. We put the faces on. We found the back was way out, like four inches or more. Once we put the sheeting on. So there's all kinds of little problems. So that slowed things down. So checking my notes. Uh, yeah, we got the... We got the sheeting up, we got all the trim work done, we made allowances for the discrepancies in the square, got all the sheeting up and the drip molding, and we're ready for shingles. So that's next. So now here's a few short clips of what happened day after day. And uh, it was really hot, the weather was really hot in the 30s, mid 30s Celsius. It was really hot. So. After about a half a day, I was done. But uh, there's a few clips of what progressed. Here we are. It's Thursday, uh, about quarter to five, 4.30, quarter to five. And I finished the roof. Well, almost. I just got a ridge cap to put on. That's the little pieces that go right on top that joins it. But I got them overlapping, so nothing's gonna get in until I figure out how to do that. But the roof is done on this side. And the ends look like this, pretty fair, pretty smooth, considering. And then we get this side, and I had to put in the two roof vents. And they're in there. And then the only thing to do is to nail some ridge tops, and we're done. Then to scout out the board and batten for the rest of the place. But that was today. It was fun trying to get up on the roof. I almost slid off a couple of times. But there we are. Another day. It was only about 34, 35 today. And at least I got the grass cut this morning. And that's our shed. At the end of another day, it's And we put it around all day putting all the bracing for the board, the board and batten. So the one with the numbers there and the one on the bottom, they have to be kind of level horizontally and everything else has to be kind of level in the middle and the board goes up on top between here and here and the brown one. We had to chink that out a little bit to make it fit. It's level, and we did a little bit of artistic work on the insides. We did a little bit of bracing, a little bit of bracing, a little bit of bracing, more bracing, and some bracing. So, we're just about ready to put board on, but until they do that, 
I have to figure out the shingle cap on top of the ridge. No idea how to do it, so maybe tomorrow I'll figure that out. And then a nice three or four foot, probably four foot window in here would be nice, by at least two feet high. That'd be nice. Make a sill, brace it up, and we'll be good. And then the door, or whatever that's going to be. And that's it for today. Another day at the shed. <coughs> There's Bella in the back in the shade. It's about 35 degrees. It's too hot. I quit. But I got the ridge done. When it gets really, really hot, all those things will melt down and be flat. And I did some trimming on the inside. There's some shelving, not shelving, but just trim here to hold the window. And on the back, I'll do some on the sides. I've done some bracing on the tops and we're ready for board. We just have to decide which way we want to go. So that's an early day, but uh, it's a long day trying to figure out these boards. Guess we have to cut into them to make them fit. Make them fit and they fit and they fit and they fit. Time for a break. That's it for today. Lumber. It's all rough cut one by 10 pine. That's the board and batten. We cut two inches off, strip off each one. That's the batten. And this does 80% of the shed. We've got another order for 14 more boards to come. But that's gonna be the outside of the shed and we just paint it gray or whatever color. Another 30, 40 degree day, and at least I got the grass cut early this morning. And I, then I went up and picked up some more wood, and we got to complete the back of the shed. So right now we're just waiting for a find on a good window for the front. We've got the door, we don't have the window. But all the trim is done, uh, the board is up. The board is up here, we also put up the uh, fascia plate, that's under there, across the front, and across the back, we have the fascia plate up, and it's all finished, waiting for the trim for the end, and we're just going to put battens on it, and it's uh, ready for paint. So we're getting there, not too many more boards to go. Another day, it's about four o'clock. So, inside is looking pretty good. As you've already seen, we bought the door. Well, the door originally was brown and too big, so we cut it down to 32 by 70, I believe it is, or 71, and uh, painted it black. And I found a nice window uh, not too far away from here, picked that up. We did cut it in two, so we left, like we had two and then one. I was gonna put a single window on the other side, but this worked out better. And here's a picture of what it would look like with two of them. Another day finished. Inside, we took down the supports. And it's the inside of our little cabin, slash utility, slash she shed slash potting shed slash whatever still gotta put a door in and but we got the window in today put all three back together had to trim it all up and put some support beams in and cut around the supports that are there and it's all nailed in it's finished let's go on the outside and have a look i cleaned up all the scrap wood and we just have to put a door on and trim off that last piece. It's a little too wide, but that's what it's like. Yeah, it looks almost done, doesn't it? But there's no battens up yet, so there's gaps between the boards. Uh, I cut the boards into five pieces, inch and seven eighths a piece, and used those as battens. And that worked out really well. 
A lot of work though, a lot of table saw time. But, got it done, it's ready for paint. Tuesday the 28th of July, and the garden's growing very well, and we just put the last nail in the shed. It's all done, complete, just gotta hang it over and paint it. So all the wood's up, all the trim's up, the window's in, the window sill is in, the framing is done, it's just a bit of caulking and paint. And all the window frames are done. Bit of paint here and there and away we go. Okay, nice corners, all the batten's done. All the nails are done. It's a shed. It's a big shed. And with some inside accents. And we can finish it however we want. We'll turn the radio off. And inside, I just have to take the one beam down. And it's all finished. All complete. Had some pretty good rains. Nothing's come inside. And we're done. Somewhere here. Well, you saw the gravel being delivered, and that's how much is left. Okay. About mm, a third of it. And we've got most of it down. We just have to finish the path, widen it a bit, go down there a little bit. And we've got the gravel around. I also painted the black trim up and down the edges there got the gravel in here got the gravel all inside it's all pretty level and out here and we're just gonna put it there and spread that lime dust around I think or whatever it is so nothing grows underneath and tomorrow I'll finish this off here everything else is done windows are done almost ready for a door that was a long day a lot of work and there's the shed it's 11 o'clock Saturday morning I've done a couple hours of shoveling and that's what's left a little pile and just because you can doesn't mean you should you saw the pictures of the gorilla cart full of gravel yeah it'll hold that weight but I couldn't tip it for the life of me so I was hand shoveling it out for a while it comfortably holds for me two and a half wheelbarrows full it'll hold three and a half but anyway so what did we do did all the gravel pretty well when it rains and clears up I'll be able to tell where the high and low spots are and we can fill in with some of the extra that we have there and 
the inside is all done. We've done the sides. We've started a little path with the excess here, leading into nowhere. And we made it nice and wide at the back so you can walk straight through. And we filled all this section in with gravel. Tried to level it up as best I could. There'll be some spots I'll have to change, but I can see a couple of spots already. But there it is. The only thing left is the door. It's Monday midday or mid morning, I guess. I just finished putting the hardware on the door and uh, putting the latch on the door. I found a doorknob assembly in the house from maybe 10 years ago. And we put that in and we close it. There you go. It's got a key on it, but we'll probably never use it. And that's the shed. We just have to go around once everything dries up and trim paint a little bit, cover some of the spots that are bleeding out where the knots are, and then decorate. And we're just about done. It's all painted, it's all done, all the hardware is on, the door, the windows, the trim, little bits of caulking, bits and pieces here and there. It'll never be complete. And the big thing I have on my note here is it'll never be complete. As we look at this next slide, and I'll put it up while I still talk here, um, you see the numbers, and they're rough numbers. They could be out $5 here, $10 there, but basically it's about a thousand dollars. That's Canadian money. Canadian thousand dollars. An 8 by 12 shed that you buy as a kit from Home Depot can be as much as $3,500 Canadian. You can go around to the Mennonites and buy one similar to this and they'll deliver it and put it on your pad for five thousand dollars. So thousand dollars and a bit of tinkering here and there were worth the effort for me and with the gravel on the bottom back breaking work yes but I can do anything with it I can take it away if I want add more I can put flagstones down I can do whatever I want with it and probably in the future that's what will happen so this has been an adventure it's been a great month or so uh, the weather's been really good and we got a shed out of it and it's great next from my daughter she wants a treehouse bunkie so that's going to be fun but stay tuned for more videos and i'm not saying they're how-to videos i'm not they're saying they're building 101s i'm not saying use this tool over that tool i'm just saying this is the experience this is the adventure going from nothing to something and anybody can do it. If you can hold a hammer and cut a straight line, you can pretty well do anything. So, hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed the voyage, the trip, the adventure. Until next time, have a great day. Stay safe. COVID is going to be over at some point. But in the meantime, wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands. See you next time. Thank you.